Welcome everyone. I'm excited today to have with me Tanmay Yadav, an IIT Kanpur graduate of 2021, who started his entrepreneurial journey while still here and in just less than three years has gone leaps and bounds in the domain of cybersecurity. Welcome Tanmay. Thanks for having me. Let's start first with how your interest and your journey started in this domain. Why did you choose blockchain and cybersecurity? What time tha which where you decided that I to do this? Okay, so I joined IIT Kanpur in 2017. At that time was a very ripe age of blockchain when new and new deep tech uh, blockchain innovations were happening around the world when we come talk about cryptocurrencies, uh, immutability, integrity checks. So we were uh, I was personally interested in working in a deep tech domain rather than doing the regular web development, software development. So that my interest was because I want to pick a technology that's going to last and that's that has an impact uh, when it comes to the digital world. So that's why I chose blockchain. I came across blockchain and started reading about it. And as I mentioned that there are very, very few institutions in India at that point in time that were even having a course on blockchain and fortunately IIT Kanpur was the one where Professor Sandeep Shukla was taking a course on blockchain and uh, I was fortunate enough to find somebody, at least a faculty, who is talking about that on campus, though there were people talking about outside of campus. Right. So um, I reached out to him. I did my basic course on Coursera and then I reached out to him for a project on the domain and then he gave me a project for uh, having a integrity audit trail related to the uh, document keeping within the department of computer science. So I worked with him and I tried to, there was a very very small project which uh, gave me the first hands on experience on the technology and uh, since then I was I started going a little further deeper into the area and realized what this technology can do. I started participating in hackathons that were organized. And then slowly, gradually, uh, my interest became so much that uh, me along with my friends decided that we should uh, form a company and uh, try to con take the technology further and solve real world business problems. I was in civil engineering. Civil engineering. Right. And, uh, uh, but I was very much keen towards uh, the computer science and not specifically to find a job but I was keen towards trying to make an impact using the core principles of uh, computer science and blockchain was one of the domains that uh, uh, intrigued me at that point in time and I picked that. And you started your first um, like a startup while you were still studying. Yeah. yeah. So um, how is it to manage time of studying civil, doing the uh, startup, learning uh, the new technology, all of it? Like, how did you manage your time? Yeah, this is. Uh, I, I I think though COVID was not a fortunate event, but uh, because of COVID, the lot of time of mine was saved in running to classes. A right. lot of things were remote. Right. So I could just uh, switch the window and join a classroom digitally and that saved me a lot of time and energy. Uh, Pre-Covid also, though I started working with Sir pre-Covid mm -hmm. and uh, I was able to uh, sleep uh, very less and was... I think uh, that's very obvious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and there was a time for six months where I just slept for three, four hours, three, four hours. So this is a long stint of six months. And I was just putting extra effort then uh, to manage both academia as well as my new adventure where I was uh, interested and wanted to contribute more. Right. Yeah, so that's how like uh, uh, sacrificing my sleep and then the COVID happened. So it gave me a time to manage things right. holistically. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, now tell us a little bit about the company that you have founded. What work you're doing? Explain to us how this whole identity and uh, credentials actually works. Okay, so um, before uh, this credential, uh, we were f part of Kruban Foundation, which was a company which formed when I was in my fifth semester. But uh, that company was largely focused on solving various kinds of blockchain problems, not an identity was just one umbrella and we were uh, solving problems related to land, related to procurement, related to supply chains, 
and we were also solving some uh, cryptographic like uh, cryptocurrency related problems where we were building some tools to uh, find the audit trail of a mis uh, mysterious transactions and then uh, identity was one umbrella but uh, since 2021, uh, when, uh, 2021 uh, and then uh, early 2022, we doubled down on the identity ecosystem. So uh, our thinking was that if you if you see the way internet works today, you might be talking to somebody on the other side of the computer, but it could be you are not very sure whether that person is actually a person or you are just talking to a dog Absolutely. or something. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. So uh, identity layer is missing on internet. Well, while well, internet was made, but there was no identity layer. So we so the new standards came out in 2018-19 period where called verifiable credentials, which is about establishing the identity layer on internet, which makes all the digital transaction, digital interactions trustworthy. So our company as Trenchel is building that digital identity infrastructure and solving the problem of the missing identity layer on a, on a large scale uh, across the world. So this. Uh, makes uh, our technology layer makes KYC is very seamless they, uh, they they reduce the dependency on the issuer of the document it is just a peer-to-peer -peer interaction between the uh, holder of a credential and the verifier and that is almost instant leveraging the power of cryptography and keeping all the checks in place okay. yeah so is it uh, only helpful if um, I, I just to for my own understanding and I'm sure everyone watching us also wants to know that uh, it obviously helps in protecting and um, safeguarding my own personal identity yeah. but how does it have like a very very large scale impact in kind of industries companies larger infrastructures where is that impact yeah so uh, if you if you see the current uh, digital world there are there is a lot of time spent uh, even though everything is online getting online digitized but a lot of time is spent on establishing the authenticity of some claim for example if you submit a degree to uh, agency on email you scan and send but to establish the authenticity of it the receiver entity will again contact back your university to establish the authenticity of that degree that ah, you yeah, yeah, right? so yes. so those things are digitally interacted but it, it's a 10 day process like you you will write they will write an email to your university university will respond back you never know so it's a 10 day process and we are reducing the 10 day process to 10 seconds and that, that will save billions of dollars for the whole industry wow. at a large scale. Right. And also there are a lot of identity theft problems that are going around and there was a report uh, which says that it was uh, it, the, the annual identity theft is uh, amounted to 1.76 billion dollars something like that. So all these identity thefts and uh, will be reduced and the whole digital ecosystem will become more and more trustworthy over the time. Okay. So our uh, digital rail, uh, you can see a kind of a rail kind of infrastructure where uh, this establ the establishment of trust between the digital uh, digitally interacting entities will be established. Can you explain this phenomena of digital rail? What do you mean by that? Yeah, so uh, so like there are physical rails, like you have highways in a physical economy, which are the backbones of the logistics. Uh, and logistics is one of the very big component of the whole GDP and economy. Similarly, there are digital rails if you see uh, uh, in a digital world. For example, Visa MasterCard is a rail where you can exchange the currency interbank, cross-border, etc. Right. So we are establishing a similar kind of a rail for identity as well, where you can take your issued document cross-border, get them easily verified across the globe instantly. So establishing a rail. Um, you, it's you, like a pathway. Uh, it's, a, it's like a in, uh, pathway or infrastructure where more applications can be built upon uh, based on the use cases. But this act as a backbone to uh, which can be trusted by entities to transact on. Okay, for, exa for example, like Aadhaar uh, right. and UPI are like one uh, rail on which various phone pay kind of various aggregate Absolutely. apps yes, are yes, built. Yes, yes. So similarly will be the identity uh, we are building the layer and on which more and more business applications can be built. Okay. Very interesting. Very. Yeah. Uh, tell us about uh, uh, recently Trenchel has uh, received a really good amount of uh, funding. Yeah. Uh, so where is the company right now? What kind of uh, position are we at? What are you looking at for the company in the future? Okay. Uh, near future, I would say. Let's Achha. not talk about 10 years down the line. I don't think we know what technology ah, right, will be. Right, right, right. And uh, things are changing at a very fast pace. Yes. And uh, 
Yeah, so as you asked about where about uh, about the funding round and also we, last year uh, June of 2023, June and July of 2023, we raised a round of two million dollars, and uh, right now we are in the initial stages of building the first product line, the first versions of the product lines, and there are various entities like National Skill Development Corporations and um, and other entities as well, uh, which are using our technology or a framework to streamline their credential issuance, verifications. Also, uh, we work with uh, various entities uh, along with NLGC, which helps in migrating students from India to the other parts of the world like US, Canada, to get their credentials easily verified, they use our ecosystem. So, um, uh, and the, right now the team size, uh, we are a company of approximately 25 people and nice. the way we are thinking is to build more and more digital identity infrastructure in not just in India but other parts of the world as well. Right. Yeah. Okay. So this is what we see in the very near future in like one and two years of time. Right. And after that I don't know. <laughs> I think nobody knows. Right, right. <laughs> That's how it goes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let's rein it back to IIT hmm. and the ecosystem and how your journey here has your connection here is still carrying on. Yeah, yeah. So you incubated your company at IIT. Yeah. Uh, you uh, do you still um, you come back here very often? I know yeah. and interact with everybody. But what is the support that is still coming from here? Are you still uh, working with some people who are at IIT? Uh, how how is it for you now, right now? Yeah. So. Um as I said, we started from IIT Kanpur and still our roots are here. Yes. So that, that brings me back time and again. So um, time to time I uh, come here and, and work closely with Professor Sandeep Shukla and Professor Manindra Garwal to discuss about uh, what new technology advancements we could make, what could be the new opportunities we could tap on. And so uh, discussing once in a month or once in a two months about where we are going and what right. will be the next thing, what advancements we could make, etc. So that that's what brings me here. here. Apart from that, the whole ecosystem, like I, I, I come to some of the alumni meets as well, like 25 year alumni meet is happening right, and right. where I meet uh, some, uh, our, some of our own alumni is where they help and guide where, uh, what should I do right, what, should, what am I doing wrong. They help me with their connections, they help me with the introductions, they they sometimes uh, guide me what to do, what not to do, uh, uh, what is the time to raise investments and what are the uh, tricks of the trade. So they teach from their 25 years of experience or 20 years of experience in the industry. And I also, um, and IIT Kanpur helps me in uh, establishing those connections with my peers, the old peers of IIT. So that uh, that's what brings me here. And yeah. Uh, being incubated here helps me in uh, finding sometimes good talent as well. Like we recruit from every year, we recruit and uh, interns. Uh, we offer our internships as well, so I could get I could get quality and fast uh, talented minds here. Right. And also I get lot of people to brainstorm my ideas sometimes. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah. So even if the good part is uh, uh, about IIT Kanpur, even if I'm sitting in a CCD or a cafeteria wherever. I could find juniors, seniors or some of the people where I, we can just start discussing the ideas and there are a lot of free flow of ideas from both the sides I am telling about what I found, what step we are taking and the, and, and the good part of the ecosystem is they don't just support what I am saying, okay you are doing right, they criticize in a very <laughs> constructive manner and which I go back and improvise upon and then implement in my day-to-day -day execution of business. That's amazing. That's, yeah. that's a very healthy kind healthy of environment. Healthy kind of environment, for right. Sure. So yeah. it's not just that, okay, you are an alumni or you have done great, great. No, they, they have the confidence in them or they have the acumen to actually criticize me ki, no, Tanmay, you could have done this this way, it would have ended up better. Right. Then either I could justify why I'm knowing and not going their way, or I could take that as a feedback and then sometimes think uh, that okay, this could also be in another way. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so Tanmay, you're in this uh, obviously this domain which is the most talked about right now. Yeah. Everybody wants to be a part of it, or everybody wants to understand it. Either of the two like uh, spectrums. For people who want to be a part of it, is where I think more curiosity. What people would want to hear from you because you're. You've started off, you're starting your own, you have your own venture, you're in the thick and thin of it, you're young, you know, yeah. the whole world is right, you know, out there for you. Yeah. So, um, from your perspective, this whole um, stream of opportunities that everybody is, you know, all around talking about, how do you see that? How is this world of opportunities 
just building up and just increasing for hmm. youngsters coming in yeah so with more and more automation and with more uh, and more infusion of ais in uh, ai models etc in day to day uh, business operations uh, the need for cyber security and the need for deep tech core cryptography has increased a lot because there are automations a lot of automations and you never know where it could fail so you need to be uh, very sure about all your uh, processes that are working though they are automated but it could be there could be a faulty spot so this space is uh, very uh, lucrative and i think this is the right justification to computer science as well Dev- doing web development is not just the right justification uh, to computer science it could be good for developers but computer science is about solving the true mathematical problems which uh, i think the iit kanpur ecosystem has it all like the, the uh, researchers the professors so it has it all to actually work on the core problems now coming about how anybody could get into i would say any difficult thing the good part about uh, like any any domain you pick blockchain etc anything you pick there is a a uh, steep learning curve where you have to spend some time and you have to uh, devote some initial one year where you uh, initial 3 months you might not be able to uh, understand what's going on right to get uh, to actually have a decent grasp of the topic you need to spend some good amount of time and then you need to relate those theoretical or uh, experimental things to the industry problems which Correct. this lab has because they have industry projects related to those domain absolutely so they can give you hands on exposure to those things so doing internship i think i think uh, the best way to start is doing a internship, internship or try reach out to professors or the researchers here for a side project mm. that will help you get a exposure and so th- th- there is a problem with the uh, as i was saying there is a problem with the deep tech that it is a, it takes a lot of time to learn but the good part is if you learn it then you are among the handful of people who knows that better right and there are, then there is no competition you don't have to worry about the competition you have to be the best in your domain right so you just work on trying to get better and better over the period so uh, the good part is as i am saying if you are able to reach that level then you are one of the sole players in that the competition reduces because there are very few people who knows at a very basic level mm-hmm. uh, how things are working how cyber security and quantum all these things are working mm-hmm. so the good part is as i was saying the entry point could be a internship or uh, you can start with the online course as well but come here for a internship and talk to sidhya people and they could get you some small project that's very interesting and i think a very very good tip for everybody and anybody who wants to get an entry foot into this uh, domain and navigate from you know how to balance and how to figure out while being a student you know how to get into this particular sector uh tanmay just before we finish it off i want to ask you some very simple questions quick i want one one a- a word answers okay. from you right okay so are you the uh, brains behind the tech or the business initially uh, i was a contributor in tech but now i am handling the business part okay yeah Uh, you don't miss the tech part no because uh, the kind of industry we are in while you are talking business you have to solve the tech problem for the end absolutely that's true first. yeah that's absolutely so right. uh, uh, 50% of my work is about solving or solutioning the tech only yeah. so i am very much in touch with the tech also mm-hmm. it's not that i but, but i am not just doing it hands on but otherwise i am well versed about everything that's absolutely going yeah, on absolutely i'm sure 100% yeah, yeah so that way i am not missing it too much yeah yeah uh, so yeah and there has to be some business done otherwise you can oh, obviously have, uh, <laughs> i think that's even more important Then, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Right. um what is the one quality that a student needs to have to become an entrepreneur becomes shameless wow yeah. i did not expect that uh, yeah. what do you mean uh, that never be afraid about your image or never be afraid about asking for help from anyone be it your senior junior faculty alumni anybody amazing yeah, yeah. so that makes you stand apart you have and what is be. the biggest challenge of being an entrepreneur managing people aha uh-huh, right yeah. yes you now have a team of uh, some 25 people yeah, yeah. and and uh, then a group of investors advisors as well yeah yeah, yeah. we'll go back to your student life yeah what was your favorite uh, spot on campus 
CCD and library, the fountain area. Right. Yeah. yeah. What was the least favorite? Um, hostel rooms. Hostel rooms. Yeah. I thought you would have said hostel mess. The food. No, luckily I was in hall five, so the food was better there than the ah, other okay. hostels as compared to hall two and hall three. Right. So hall five mess was better. Uh, mm. So I shouldn't uh, criticize that. But uh, I don't. I, I never liked spending time sitting idle in rooms. Ah, like that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So that's so why I was either in uh, RM Computer Science Department or in front of library CCD. Okay. Yeah, those are the places. And now you've crossed the threshold, and now you're an alumni. Yeah, yeah. You were talking about how alumni has been giving you know a lot of support to you and etc. Right. right. Now you're the alumni. Yeah, yeah. What advice and support are you giving to everybody watching you? Yeah, so um, I constantly I'm still in touch with the people uh, currently in first year also. So okay. I keep guiding them, advising them in whatever difficulty they face. Either they sometimes face difficulty in running their student bodies, they're finding internships. So I keep them, uh, I keep advising them on those things. And as an alumni, uh, I could extend the help that if you are finding anything difficult to understand or comprehend that where am I doing, uh, what I'm doing in life, where am, I, where am I going, you can always feel free to reach out to me. My number is in public domain. You can reach out to me anywhere and I can uh, find a time either on the weekends and help you figure out some things and give you some tips. Though it, it would be a gyan, <laughs> but uh, sometimes it could be objective help also, like yes. some referrals or some resources, so that, that way. So there you have it. Yeah. You have Tanmay here who you can reach out to for any and every help that you need in this domain or generally to progress in life. Thank you Tanmay so much for being Thanks with for us, for taking me. out this time. Best of luck with all your endeavors and hope to see you soon. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Yeah.